recently I uh, saw an interview with Dan Crenshaw. He's a uh, U.S. House representative from Texas. He was, he's a former Navy SEAL, lost his eye uh, in combat. Uh, there's a television show that kind of made fun of him uh, for his appearance with the patch on his eye. And later on, the people who made fun of him apologized. And Dan Crenshaw was asked about that, and he said really he didn't feel like they needed to apologize to him. He said he tried to live, he tries to live by the motto that he tries to try very hard not to offend, and even harder not to be offended. So tonight, as we conclude our series on what it means to be a peacemaker, we're going to talk about that idea of not really uh, being offended so easily. In our current climate, um, tempers are raging, uh, people are taking offense over things that they read, even if it's not personally to them. And in the greater context of social justice and the injustices that might seem to, uh, uh, to, to make our headlines all the time, sometimes a small step towards peacemaking is recognizing that sometimes we're slighted, sometimes we're not treated fairly, and maybe we should just let that pass on a personal level. Now, I'm not talking about when we see injustices happen to others. I'm just talking about what happens to us personally as Christ followers. Listen to what the Apostle Peter wrote in 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning in verse 13. Be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it is to the emperor supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but as servants of God. Honor everyone. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the emperor. Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the unjust. For this is a gracious thing. When mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you are good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow his uh, steps. He committed no sin. Neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sin in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were straining like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Trust to God the injustice you've suffered. So basically, Peter is telling us that we should recognize that when we suffer unjustly, that we also have a Savior who has done the same thing. Jesus, Jesus endured evils and injustices that were committed against him on our behalf. So entrusting in God means looking to him to deal with injustices rather than us taking our own measure of our seeking revenge, but just trusting God. Now in our culture, we are prone to always demand our rights. But sometimes, as Christ's followers, in order to pursue peace, we need to yield some of our personal rights. When somebody slights us or says something negative to us, instead of returning 
that, we should just let it go and let it pass. And trust God will bring something about from that encounter uh, that is positive, that is good in the long run. Because it is from God, it is from God, this good work that we do by not being like the world, uh, he brings forth good fruit out of that, out of our own tenderness, out of our own mercy to others. So next time that somebody has a prayer, if there is a prayer request that you have that you'd like to have shared, uh, you can do that uh, on the chat boxes below. If you'd like for us to include that in uh, our prayer sheet, just go ahead and put that there that will come out tomorrow. And just remember, as we're praying, think about those people that tend to get on your nerves or people who seem to mistreat you. Take an opportunity to, uh, to take stock of that and to think how you can actually bless them. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, I thank you for the opportunity we have to just pause this evening and remember that there are times that we are treated unfairly. People say things to us, they mistreat us, um, uh, that, 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 we, uh, that they violate our, even our personal space and our personal rights. And there are times that we should just let that go. Just as Jesus suffered injustices for our sake. And help us not to be returning evil for evil but that we would seek opportunity to overcome that evil with good. So help us to be able to yield our rights when appropriate, when it's appropriately good for the, the greater well-being of our community or of the situation. And we ask that you would just continue to help us as Christ followers just to focus on being a healing agent to those within our sphere of influence. And we pray this in Christ's name. So, as Lisa closes us with uh, music, uh, if you have a praise that you'd like to share, we'd love to hear those praises. So just type that in the chat box as we uh, finish out. Take care. Good night.